Hello and welcome to the How to Exit podcast. So today I'm here with Gary. Say your last name for me one more time, man. Gusano. Gusano. All right, yeah, yeah. I'm here with I'm here with Gary. Gary is the CEO of Real Defense, which owns over 12 ba- brands in the uh, computer security place. He's even looking to acquire more B2C and B2B software as service companies. Hey, welcome, Gary. Thank you for being here, man. Let's get people to kind of know who you are. What kind of started yourself? What started you? You know, your journey down the entrepreneur space. I jokingly say, "Okay, you were born, and then now you ended up on my show." What kind of fill in the gap in between? Sure, sure, no worries. Um, yeah, I started uh, in, in the direct marketing space. I had a, a company in the late '90s, actually, that did uh, everything digital. We did website design. We did uh, pay-per-click advertising, display advertising. And my my clients, my uh, early clients were AT and T uh, and Atlantic Richfield, which is a, a big oil company, British Petroleum, um, Sony, Disney, and, and all these big brands that wanted to have a digital presence, and they also wanted to do custom acquisition online. And so we, we started with pay per click advertising before Google even became the, a search engine that we know today. And so um, if you recall back in the day, we had Alta Vista and Go to and all these different search engines that don't exist today. And so that was my my entry into digital world. And then uh, kind of skip forward. I, I uh, started a cybersecurity company in 2003 um, called Cyber Defender. We took it public. And then in 2011, I was asked to uh, help a company called Anchor Free. They have a product called Hotspot Shield. It's the most popular VPN product in the world. And we were very successful during the Arab Spring. We kind of enabled Twitter and YouTube to work um, around the world and or in areas of the world where it was prohibited to, uh, to access social media. And then uh, 2015, I launched a, uh, I co-founded a company called Incast. It's a, uh, 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 a influencer marketing platform. And we brought TikTok to South America, and then we brought TikTok to the United States and, and helped sort of orchestrate its move to the top. Um, and in 2018, I co-founded a company called Real Defense Holdings. It's a uh, acquisition company that acquires consumer privacy and security companies. And we've done some acquisitions uh, and continue to do more. And we're building a, a, um, a consortium of products and services focused around consumer privacy and security uh, services around um, uh, uh, for North America and Western Europe, where consumers can access our antivirus technologies to tech support to VPNs and whatever they need to stay safe online. How does that impact? Like, I see why you say you don't. You're not looking for high growth, high value because you have a user base that they have a valid, great product. Then you have a base to sell it to, right? Yeah, yeah. Those are actually paying customers. Uh, just to be clear, um, they're not free users. They, our business model is, is really. It comes in sort of uh, two flavors. We se- we sell direct to consumers, so Google and display advertising, television, etc. We also license our technology. So a lot of our uh, licensing partners are well-known antivirus companies who take our code base and put it in their own applications. And so we uh, are partnered with some of the biggest media antivirus companies around the world. Um, we're partnered with uh, uh, device manufacturers like Dell, Lenovo, and all, all the hardware manufacturers that you've heard of. And we're also uh, uh, in 20,000 retail locations. And so we're, you know, covering all the uh, all the sort of customer acquisition opportunities. And uh, any company that we do acquire, we offer that those those channels to them. And so uh, it makes perfect sense to do product acquisitions and, and companies that are don't have, for instance, retail distribution like we do, or doesn't have the licensing channel uh, that we have. Uh, it makes sense for us to it makes sense for us to do these deals. And so we've done an acquisition once where the company was out of compliance in certain areas, and they didn't know how to become compliant, but they knew they had to be compliant. And so that that made it easier for us to uh, fix it and, and bring them to compliance. But those are the two areas. You know, compliance is one. The other one is, uh, uh, you know, how to uh, sort of how companies quantify their financials, you know, and it's when you're less than, if you're a 10, $15 million company or smaller, that becomes challenging. That's really important. It's it's important to have a good accounting team or a bookkeeper or somebody you trust and they can organize your information. As long as it's, it's truthful, you know, you can, you can figure out a way how to fix something in terms of improving it by improving sales or, you know, reducing your expenses. But if that information isn't accurate, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to fix because you can't you can't measure it. 
you know, I have friends that have small businesses and they, and they have the same problem all the time. And they, they come to me and they say, look, how do I deal with this? And my recommendation is, 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 is the following. First, you got to know how to delegate to people. You can't do it all. It's impossible. There's no, you can't be the CEO and the accountant and the bookkeeper and the whole thing. You got to delegate. And it's okay if when, when you delegate to someone that they don't necessarily perform at your level because that's part of the reason they don't want to delegate it's because they're afraid that the other person is not going to do it the way they expect them to do it. That's a process you got to go through. Let the person fail a few times. Teach them how to do it correctly. Be a mentor. Be a guide. Be the, the, the boss and let them figure it out. And then you'll have that leverage because now you've got more time. You've just delegated somebody else. Now you have that time that you've gained to do something more, which should be selling or raising money or figuring out the next product or figuring out the next marketing strategy, right? So a lot of business owners don't know how to do that. That's one of the biggest reasons why businesses fail. One of the biggest reasons they don't sell, okay, is because they don't know how to, uh, you know, delegate to others. You know, you also have to look at their background and see when you're hiring them, do they have a quantifiable sales record? You know, can they prove that they deliver? Can they show your results? And if they, if you can't put your finger on the previous experience and can't quantify the previous experience, you're, it's not, it's, 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 they're not the right person for you. And so um, hiring is really important. I mean, at the end of the day, what do you have if you don't have people in your company, right? Absolutely. Uh, it's a people business. Uh, acquisitions is a people business. You get to a certain level and people think it's the offer, it's the structure, it's all this. But the reason a lot of these business uh, acquisitions and mergers fail is the integration fails. They fail yeah. to match the human uh, nature, the culture, the uh, human expectations of all the employees. And they start losing them and the thing crashes or burns or it never integrates in because there's resistance, right? Now, there are brokers out there. Uh, that, that, that that sell businesses, you get on their list and kind of look at their flow of deals. And I, I you know, I, to be honest, in a, in a sub $50 million uh, value market and sort of a small business, I found those deals to be not so interesting. They're, they're always like, there's always something wrong. There's like some kind of fundamental problem with the company. And so um, I would be careful for, for, with those types of deals. Uh, sourcing on your own is the best. Just going to the to the owner and saying, "Hey, I want to buy you." What, you know, what, what would it take? If you can have those conversations with people, you'll probably do better than going to a broker and having the broker. Well, the broker you can ask the broker to do it for you. There are companies out there that you can hire, and they'll go and find you deals if you tell them your criteria. So that also can work. 